The hard truth of the matter is, is that in real life self-defense, there are no easy fights. Welcome to today's lesson on active self-protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Panjim in India. Today's video is brought to us by Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24-7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for self-defenders. They are offering a discount on their plan to ASP fans, so hit the link in the description for that. So we see here a thief leaving and trying to grab what he stole, but the guard is gonna, gonna try to stop him and so he's gonna start hitting him with a hammer. And that's a pretty serious stuff there. That's a claw hammer that he's got and our guard is gonna take a couple off the noodle there and we're seeing him still try, but off of his back, that guy's got a definite position of advantage and you see what looks like he actually caught him in the head with the claw portion of that hammer. So our guard's gonna get the hammer back, take a swing at the other guy, but he got away. Our guard thankfully survived and that's where this one ends. Serious stuff, but I love how he stayed in the fight. If you want to support the work we do here at Active Self Protection, would you consider becoming a patron member on our website? Rather than do a whole lot of other places or Patreon or something like that, we do it on our website. There's a link in the description. I really appreciate all of you who support the work we do and help me pay our staff. Let's make sure that we get great lessons out of today's video too. First lesson I would really say out of this one, dude's trying to leave, let him go for gracious sakes. He has a hammer in his hand. That hammer can do you deadly harm and it doesn't look like our guard has anything in his hands. Do I want to fight somebody who has the a means and ability and the intent to do me deadly harm when I don't have that, when I only have my empty hands? Not if I could possibly help it. Now, of course, if my life is at stake or the stake, you know, the lives of my loved ones at stake, you do what you got to do. But when it's money at stake, let it go and let the bank pay for that. Uh, I, you know, I honor this guard's heart, but I just don't think it was very smart. Secondly, you see him get a hold of the guy, but I want to notice here that the, the hammer was in the attacker's left hand, but he hand switched here. And we see that kind of hand switching go on all the time. We'll see it happen a couple of times here in the attack. You got to be mindful of that when we're talking about the five Ds plus one. Now then, he is getting hit in the head, and I want you to notice the fact that when we talk about he's got the distance closed, okay, fine. You got to deflect and then dominate, then distract, disarm, disable. And he doesn't do that. He covers the distance. Okay, he's at the distance he wants to not get beat up with this hammer. But then again, he gets out of that distance by pushing off and giving that guy in the right spot to hit him with the hammer. And because of that, now he can't do anything else. Now here, he puts his feet out. That changes the distance a little bit where he can't get hit in a very sensitive area because he's using his legs to maintain the distance and stay out of contact or out of serious contact here. And that is a principle that we see work again and again in real life self-defense. So again, either get inside the distance of a medium range tool like a hammer or get completely out of it. And he struggles with that. Now watch here as he goes the first time, the guy tries to hit him in the head and he uses his hand to keep that away from him and it deflects and that worked really well. So we get that deflect again, as the guy closes the distance, okay, I'm in the distance that I have to defend. I can't, you know, just stay out of the distance. So now I close the distance and deflect, but that only works a time or two, friends. He will adjust what he chooses to attack and now I have to dominate. And if I don't, this is exactly what happens is he comes to a different place and makes an attack from a different angle and that can be very difficult to defend against. Now he tries to reset the distance here with his legs. And again, I think he does an okay job of that, but eventually our bad guy is going to adjust. So when we talk about these principles of the five Ds plus one, these are happening in, in just split seconds, friends. So you gotta adjust and you gotta train with this stuff so it's second nature when it happens to you for real. Because once his legs are passed, this guy's in real trouble. And once he can't keep his legs in front of him, that's when he gets that big hit. So again, you're not gonna get that forever. And, and and in real life self-defense, anybody who's trained in grappling off their back, which again, you got to be able to defend yourself off your back. Anybody who's trained in, you know, the standing dirty boxing grappling world will tell you, you've got to get to your feet if you possibly can, because that, that gives you the mobility in order to defend yourself against an armed attacker far better than being on the ground here. Now that said, notice here finally that our good guy has gotten this, this hammer completely dominated. So you, you dominate the tool, that's one spot, the hand with the tool, the arm with the tool, the entire person. And at least he's got the tool dominated here. And because of that, now it's not attacking him anymore. So once you close the distance and deflect the tool, now dominate. Once you dominate, now you can start distracting and then disarming and disabling. If you don't distract, 
then what you get here is you get a strength battle. But at least here, our defender has the leverage dominance because he's got the end of the hammer that can't really be taken away from him. So Guy decides to get distracted on his own because he wants to get away. So he finds his ability to get away. That distracts him from holding the hammer. And our good guy's able to take that away and disarm him. And then we got to work on the disable. So I think there's a lot of lessons here about the 5Ds plus one that the distance is absolutely key. But once we do that, deflecting and then dominating, absolutely keys. And if you don't do those, friends, you will not have success as you seek to cover your ASP.